Today I'm going to give you three tips on how to shoot manual mode, specifically talk about lighting, composition, and subject matter. And I chose these three in this order because this is the way in which I learned how to shoot manual mode. Uh, I'll keep timestamps in the bottom just in case you want to jump back and forth from the specific tips that I give, make it easy for you guys. Uh, all right, let's get into it. So I actually just got this new lens and I got two of them and it's uh, from Pocket Dispo and it's a fully manual lens. Uh, shooting manual was always something that I was gonna do no matter what, it was something that I learned in. So first and foremost, lighting. Getting your lighting down in manual mode is one of the reasons why most people avoid shooting in manual. Um, I personally never shot in aperture priority mode or shutter or any of those extra little dials that you see on top of a camera because to me that was actually harder than just shooting manual in the first place. Uh, I'll say it because of this. So the importance of light with photography and videography lies in the triangle, uh, ISO or ISO, aperture and shutter. Each of these things control how much light is hitting your sensor. And then your sensor itself is also reliant on that uh, in terms of how sharp or soft an image is gonna be. Now the more wide open aperture is on a lens uh, the deeper or the uh, more shallow the depth of field is going to be also the more light you're going to get in a faster lens uh, meaning 1.8 or even up to those twos and threes faster always means a lower f-stop they're looking for lower f-stops you're going to get a shallower depth of field that being said you're going to get more light in on your camera iso is an electronic way of making your uh, sensor a bit more sensitive now the higher it is typically the more grain you're going to get but different cameras have a different base native iso cinema cameras uh, will typically have two uh, I, the ones I've worked with have only had about two. Uh, the camera I'm shooting on right now, my uh, Panasonic Lumix BGH-1, its base ISO is 400 and its top tier one is 2000. Now, ISO comes all the way back to a bygone era of when you're shooting on film. Uh, the ISO number is how sensitive the film is to light. Same thing with your sensor. The sensitivity of the sensor uh, is determinant on the base ISO or how much noise it'll start to produce depending on how much light is hitting it or how little light is hitting it. Now this lens, again, is a good example. This is a manual lens with a aperture that's around 10. So the next part about aperture is uh, the higher the f-stop, the slower the lens, the more things you get in focus because the shallower the focus, the more you have to worry about where your focus is on your subject and or your composition, which we'll get to in the next part. So let's, for instance, this is a F stop 10. The aperture is 10. It's um, not a very shallow depth of field at all, which means I get more things in focus, but it means I'm getting less light on my sensor. So now I'm gonna to start to look at things like my ISO and my shutter. The way I think of it is, first of all, what lens am I using? Okay, now I understand the f-stop I'm gonna be playing at, depending on if I want shallow or not. Shutter is gonna be determinant of not only the amount of light coming in, which all three of these are determinant on the amount of light coming in, but how sharp or soft I want to image. If I want long exposure, if I want to freeze frame things. So the best rule of thumb, I don't know if I typically go with this though, but you never want your shutter speed lower than the focal length of the lens. So the focal length on this lens is 28. So if I have a shutter speed lower than that, I'm gonna to start to get some motion blur in there no matter how steady I am. Now in general, I try not to go by that rule of thumb. If I want something sharp, I'm 100 uh, to 125 and up. Now, depending on how you're shooting is determinant on how much light's in. So we talked about the shutter, the aperture, and the ISO. 
the more comfortable you get with shooting in manual, the more many of those rules don't even apply anymore. Sometimes I shoot in 2000 and up on my ISO. Most people are afraid of that, but don't be. Uh, with lenses, have fun. I used to not want to shoot on my kit lenses or antique lenses because that f-stop wasn't low. So I was always shooting for bokeh and shallow depth of field, but then I was missing on some of that softness that I really like with my flash strobe photography with editorial stuff. Uh, now, the last part I'll say about lighting is, okay, how are you shooting your subject? Is it natural light? Is it flash? Is it continuous lighting, which I'm using now in video? Uh, I always suggest people get used to shooting with the sun, and there is a 180 degree rule with sunlight. Shoot with an object in between you and the sun. I love shooting into the sun. Uh, one reason that's a good rule is because you'll get more depth. Your picture won't be flat how much dimension is in your image. A good photographer creates dimension. Then this brings us into the next part with composition. Now, composition is very determinant on how you're shooting in manual, particularly because you don't have a lot of things popping off in auto. Now, an easy way to set you up for success is when I first started out, I was told, throw your ice on auto. It is something you can easily work around. And I did that at first. But uh, I'm going to say something now that technically should have been in the back with lighting. But white balance is very important. So white balance is determinant on a Kelvin scale. And we can get more to that another time. But so when you're going for composition, you're going for mood, you're going for tone, you're going for shapes. All of these things will support the subject, which is why I'm using subject last. So when I'm searching for a composition, I'm making sure I have all my lighting and my ability to light already finished and done. So. What does that mean? What does that look like? If I'm gonna be shooting outdoors with no external flash or continuous light, I wanna know what time of day it is. Golden hour is always a good time, but I personally like shooting in midday in hard light. I'm gonna start showing examples through this video of my style and which I'm explaining about ranting. But I like hard light and if if not, I like the complete opposite. I like nice cloudy days. I like gloom. I like fog. Uh, but because I'm so comfortable in the former part with my ability to play with my aperture, my shutter, and my ISO on the go and on the fly, that makes it easier to compose. I'm an actor, so know your lines well enough to be able to just go in and play composition the play part this is when you as a photographer shine um, even more so than telling a story or sh looking for a subject so the way I compose in manual is it is already prepared back here with my settings so when I am preparing to compose a subject uh, I am set up for success and now going on the subject There is a saying, what is it? Beginners are obsessed with gear. Amateurs are obsessed with settings. Professionals are obsessed with lighting. And so when I'm shooting uh, a person, per se, with my editorial work, um, the subject is obviously the person, but to me, it's the quality of the person. I like to try to uh, extract the, the the substance that makes that person them. So that requires a bit of communication, obviously, and we do that. But then when setting up my camera, when playing with manual mode, I am completely willing to adapt to the way they move, to the way light catches their skin color, um, being able to understand where those issues lie with ISO, with aperture, and with shutter has made me successful in a way. So, and I don't believe I'm able to do that in a way quite as fluidly 
in those more automatic settings. Um, and there's no issue with shooting in a point and shoot style way. But to me, I wanna break up this idea that shooting in manual is rigid and hard. When in reality, you have the most amount of freedom. Now how do I compose my subject? Now here's my lighting for it. I like to start from this way. These are the light, this is the lighting settings I'm gonna go in playing with because I know my location and where I know the lights I'm gonna be using. Compose this in my mind and then on location and then play with my subject. To me, I get the most freedom out of that. So just three simple tips. Hopefully I didn't ramble on too much, but take these for yourselves and, and see what it's like for you. And I do highly suggest uh, playing with Pocket Dispo. I'm gonna do a short video about them, hopefully tomorrow or something. But amazing lenses, it really restricts my ability to play with this wide aperture range because there's zero aperture control on this thing. And it's magical. So. Get out there, get shooting. Hopefully you guys have a great rest of your day and make sure to like, share, subscribe, all the fun stuff and have a good one. Yes.